In the last video, we learned about the conceptual workings of selection sort versus insertion sort. And more valuably, based on the visual abstract descriptions of how the two algorithms work, we were able to actually derive the running time, uh, stating that uh, the two algorithms are both quadratic. That's a very important uh, concept for you to actually uh, grasp before we actually see the actual coding. And in this video, I would like to go over quickly and briefly the Java implementation for selection sort and insertion sort. There will be quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of details uh, which you really have to uh, look at the code yourself and study that and really appreciate how things uh, will actually work. But I'll just give you some guidance, quick guidance, maybe with a little bit tracing to actually help you understand how they can be, uh, in, they can be implementing the abstract idea that we spoke about earlier. We'll start with the selection sort, and this will be uh, this part here is just a reminder about how the selection sort works conceptually, which we did intensively uh, in the earlier video. And this will be the implementation for the selection sort. At the end of uh, this part over here, I will also give you. Uh, a quick guidance about how you may actually play with the code in Eclipse using debugger. That's something I will show you as well. Okay, one thing at a time. So this will be selection sort. Before I start tracing and maybe make, making some annotation to really help you understand the code, I would suggest spend about five to 10 minutes, pause the video and spend the time to really go over the code line by line to see if you can understand or to at least imagine how the code, how the code is gonna work uh, given some input array. I would say you do that exercise on your own first. Uh, don't worry too much if you really get lost, but at least you try. Okay, you can, not, uh, you can now pause the video. All right, assuming that you look at the code and then kind of imagine how that might work. If you got a very good idea about how it works, good for you. If no, let's now try to get some intuition on the code together. All right, so selection sort is exactly over here, over here. And you can see we got double nested loop. Next loop over here, and notice that the inner loop actually will start with the loop counter j being the value of i. And let me remind you, this will be very similar kind of a runtime analysis to what we spoke about earlier in the module. This one specifically, right, about a triangular sum. And remember, we actually tried to look at i and j, the patterns, and then derive the runtime. You will need something similar to uh, this particular exercise in order to analyze the uh, selection sort and insertion sort. And I'm gonna leave that detailed analysis to you as an exercise, but I'm gonna just uh, talk about, just uh, briefly, about how you can approximate the writing time from the code, all right? And again, if you got any doubts about this particular part, you can definitely re uh, rewind the video, or you can uh, ask me during the Q&A. All right, let me come back to the selection sort over here. And you will see that I got two boxes over here I talk about outer loop and also inner loop. I would say uh, read the description yourself as well to really convince you they, they, uh, that they really hold. I'm just trying to give you the idea about what's really the intuition behind each loop. So we got the outer loop over here, the blue one. And also we got the inner loop over here, the pink one. So over here, the blue and the pink, the boxes actually kind of uh, tell you what you can expect at the end of each iteration for that particular outer or inner loop, right? But before they would actually make sense, I would suggest we actually try to trace the code together and then we'll talk about running time briefly, all right? What we will do is uh, let's now try, to, uh, assuming that you already got some familiarity about the code, let's now try to do it. And one thing I would like to emphasize over here, apparently you can see this part over here is doing something that's very obvious to you. They're trying to swap, right? This part over here is simply trying to swap AI and A at min index, right? That's something we can note right away, right? You can see we are basically trying to eventually swap this element over here and also this element over here, right? Between these two, right? By using some intermediate variable. I'm pretty sure you know how to do a swap. Well, a swap is simply some constant time operation because you only require variable assignments, all right? Knowing this, let's now try to trace the code. The input array that we're considering will be the A over here, right? You can, uh, and of course, you can assume that the input size N is actually going to be four. One, two, three, four. We got four elements there. So there will be four in this particular tracing. All right. And for the case of selection sort, I only need to trace maybe two iterations and then hopefully you will get an idea. Let's see. 
And let's now start with the outer loop, right? For the outer loop, I'm going to use the blue. Okay. This will be the outer loop over here. And then for the inner loop, I will try to use maybe the pink. Okay. Just to also correspond to the color of the boxes over here, right? You can see the two boxes over here, right? All right. For the outer loop, let's now take a look. For the outer loop, we actually got I initially is going to be zero. And then you will go all the way to N minus two inclusively, right? That's something good. Uh, of course, you can work out exactly how many number of iterations by calculating the number of numbers in the interval. That's something we spoke about earlier. So the first value for i is going to be 0, right? And then we're actually going to execute this line over here. That'll be the minimum index. So that's, so that's something we'd like to find out. And then when we go to the inner loop over here, in that case, uh, we're going to run j starting from i being equal to 0 all the way to n minus 1. And what is n minus 1 in this case? It will be 4 minus 1, which will be 3, right? So it's going to go from 0, 1, all the way to n minus 1. And in this specific case, n minus 1 is simply 3 over here. So what, what, we, what you can think about is we're going to find out the index of the minimum, which is called min index. So go from 0 until 3. So go from 0 until 3. We're going to find out the minimum number, right? That's exactly how we describe it abstractly, right, in the earlier video, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to find out exactly. So I'm going to omit the details about tracing each iteration. It's kind of a, a very tedious, but eventually we can assume we can find out the minimum. The minimum apparently is going to be 1, which will be with index 1. So this will be the minimum index. So the minimum index at line number six, after at the point that we want to do the swap, the line, uh, the minimum index will just be one over here. All right. And then in this case, we are trying to swap a one and also a I, which will be zero, a one and also a zero, right? We're trying to swap them. Well, with the, uh, with the help of the, of the intermediate variable. So we're going to swap them one, 3, 1 is going to become 1 and also 3. All right. At this, at the end of this particular iteration, this is how the array is going to look like. So we go from the init, uh, initial input into this particular intermediate array at the end of the first iteration for the outer loop over here. All right. And according to what we said in the outer loop over here, at the end of each iteration for the for loop, the outer loop over here, the array A is sorted from A0 to AI. Remember, AI is actually uh, at the end. Well, it's actually before. We're talking about before I is incremented. So we go from A0 to A0. So this part over here is sorted. That's uh, what we are talking about, right? Not including this, right? Only A0 to A0. So here, the I, here we are talking about is before it is increment. Before I++, plus plus, right? Uh, before before the I plus plus actually take place, right? Okay, that's uh, just to clarify. So let me highlight it uh, with green. So at this point, only this part is sorted. All right, let me just make it a little bit thicker. So this part here is sorted at the end of the first iteration. All right, let's now go to the second iteration and see what happened. And for the second iteration, I is going to be incremented by one. So that'll be one over here. And again, we're going to execute this uh, inner loop the second time. And j is going to, going to stop from 1 until n minus 1, which will be 3. So we're going to go from 1 all the way until n minus 1, which we know is actually a value 3 over here, right? So what we're actually doing before I do anything, so the, the array that we're going to start with, the second iteration, is going to be 1, 3, and four two. I'm just copying this array over here to here, so you can see more clearly. And then what we started with is this portion over here is already sorted. That is why j is going to take the value from one to three. So that means from this part over here, we are trying to find out the minimum index, right? That also makes sense because this is the unsorted portion in iteration number two. So that's why we are finding out the min uh, the min uh, the minimum from there, all right? So this part over here is definitely going to try to find out the minimum over here, right? And let's now skip that part. That one's pretty straightforward. And we know the minimum is going to be an index three over here, right? Index three. And then 
when we get to the swap portion over here, the minimum index will be 3. And the current index for i is actually uh, 1 over here, right? It's going to be 1. So we are swapping a1 and also a3. That's what we are doing. So a1 over here and also a3 over there. Swap the two. And after the swap, we're going to get, so rather than 3, 2, it's going to be 2, 3. 2 and 3. And we effectively gr have grown the sorted portion by just another elements at the end of the uh, second iteration. And now if you check the outer loop again over here, so now from A0 to AI, remember before the I++, currently I is actually 1. So from A0 to A1, this is the sorted portion. And if we try to do the third iteration, we're going to grow this uh, green area by just another element. And hopefully it will include the value 3 over there by swapping these two elements, right? So that's about the selection sort. I hope you can uh, you get a very good idea about how this algorithm works. It's not too bad. And it co corresponds very closely to how we spoke about uh, the selection sort conceptually uh, or visually. All right, what about running time? Let's uh, take a quick look of the running time. If you look at the running time, uh, think about i. i over here is actually going to be uh, 0, 1, 2, all the way to n minus 2, right? You can see over here from the header of the loop, exactly over here, right? And then when i is actually equal to 0, we're actually going to get j from 0 all the way to n minus 1. It's going to be from 0 all the way to n minus 1. And then for when i is equal to 1, it's going to be from 1 to n minus 1. And then it's going to be from 2 to n minus 1. Right? And then the last one here is going to be from n minus 2 to n minus 1. Right? And for each iteration for the inner loop, uh, you can see for each inner loop, Iteration is going to just uh, to find out if the current elements uh, can be replaced by the minimum. Okay, uh, should really be the actual minimum. That will be just constant, right? That's something uh, very uh, trivial. That will be big of one, right? So for each of the iteration, it's going to be just one. All right, just remember. And if you try to add up the number of iterations together, because each iteration is going to be a, a constant time operation. And also, what about the swap? And remember. There are several statements for the outer loop over here. This is the first statement. And then this is the second statement the in the uh, inner loop. And this swap is the third statement. So the swap here, technically speaking, is part of the uh, body of the outer loop. So that'll be just constant. So in this case, when we calculate it, it will just be dropped eventually because it's a lower term. All right, so if you try that, it's going to be a sequence almost like this. So let me just put it here. It's going to be big O of Right, you can see from zero to n minus one, we got n. From one to n minus one, we got n minus one, and then plus from here two to n minus one, it'll be n minus two. All the way to the final one is going to be just two over here. Right, it's a arithmetic sequence. I'm pretty sure you know how to derive it. You can apply the formula that we spoke about, and it's going to be eventually big O of n square. Okay, that's uh consistent with how we derived uh, in the earlier video, when we only got a, a, con a conceptual sketch of the algorithm. All right, so that's about, about a selection sort. You can definitely also look at this uh, pink box over here about what each inner loop is supposed to do, but that one should be obvious. It's just to find out the minimum, all right? And also make sure you understand about how we find a loop pattern over here. We are uh, basically just explain it again, uh, according to the uh, what we said in the earlier example. All right, let's now switch to insertion sort. Uh, before that, let me just uh, see what we have to say in the slides. And in the slides, we actually got uh, some uh, exercise over here for you. You can take a look over here. And then eventually, that will be the calculation over here. Exactly what I just did over here, right? That's exactly all the way to down to two, okay? And then there's a quadratic time algorithm for selection sort. And before we move on to insertion sort, uh, let me do some quick annotation on the notes before I forget. And this table over here, the only thing that I didn't really write down, but I'm definitely uh, talk about it, is about the minimum index in the setting, second iteration. So in here, we are trying to find out the minimum between 1 and n, min n minus 1, which would be to find out the minimum over here, which would be uh, actually 2, 
right? In that case, that's why we swap this two and three over there, right? Just uh, remember. And I just want to uh, point out that minimum index value should be three in this case, right? So I want to put it. All right, let's now go back and let's now move on to the insertion sort discussion.